Hundreds of people arrested at college campuses in New York City and across the nation. The NYPD was called in on Tuesday night after protesters occupied Hamilton Hall on Columbia's campus and has since arrested protesters at City College and Fordham University. And for the remainder of the semester, all classes and final exams will be fully remote at Columbia. New York City Mayor Eric Adams joins us this morning. Mr. Mayor, thank you for joining us. Uh, before we get into sort of where we go from here, what is the, what is the state of play in the city at around the universities that we've just been talking about uh, in your mind? Uh, uh, the state of the city is stable, and <clears throat> we continue to thrive, as I say over and over again. Uh, we have the finest police department on the globe, and we see that every day when they execute uh, ways of allowing people of the right of a democracy to protest, but send a clear message that if you break the law, uh, there will be actions taken. When you look at, at what's happened at Columbia and you, you think about, to the extent there are leadership lessons, there's a lot of folks who say this needed to be nipped in the bud much earlier. Uh, others say, talk about freedom of speech and, and the like, that, that this should have been allowed to continue. Um, where, where do you stand? And if you were to look back even over the last several weeks, and, and you could you could rewind time. What do you think should have happened? Well, I, I clearly I fall on the side of the importance of protesting. I protested as a youth. I even protested as a police officer after taking off my uniform. I joined uh, those issues that were important to me. But when protests cross it cross the line and go in, and goes into an area of violence destruction of property, uh, that is no longer protest. That's not what democracy is about. Uh, that is chaos, and we're not going to accept that in, in the city. And that's what we saw on Columbia. So right. when you're doing the reflection, uh, clearly, I stated over and over again, you have to, must have a zero tolerance. When the first tent went up, we should have removed it. And hats off to the Fordham University president. That was the mindset she took. She did not allow this to go several days. She took decisive action, and the police department collaborated with them. Do you think the president of Columbia should remain the president of Columbia? Uh, that's up to the board. Uh, I think that she's handling the academic achievements of, of the institution. The board would have to evaluate. Uh, I don't think any of these presidents uh, knew something like this can evolve at this level. Now it's time to look at it as a teaching moment. Uh, the experts that understand how to maintain a disorder should be advisors, and they should take the input um, from them. And that's what I believe you're seeing more and more now. Um, now that you've, you've, you've made these arrests, you've, I imagine there's investigations going on. How much of this do you think is organic, meaning that, that, that students on their own uh, have taken to these protests? And how much do you think this is outside agitators, if you will, uh, professional protesters that are, are uh, trying to uh, create these moments? And uh, that's such an important question that you're asking, uh, because uh, that's a question that we've been asking uh, every day. And I, I use the analogy uh, that if you have a group of students who have the energy to see change, but you have one professor or one teacher who's giving them misappropriate or misinformation on how to do that, you could disrupt that entire uh, classroom and that entire uh, moment of energy. That is what we're seeing here. Uh, people are asking, is it 50% outsiders? Uh, what's the percentage? Doesn't matter the percentage. We know, based on our intel and evidence, that there are individuals who are instructing students to do uh, bad things. And they are participating in some illegal actions. And that is what we're focused on. One of the persons or uh, individuals involved, a uh, husband was arrested for terrorism. We cannot downplay the desire of hijacking uh, this entire rightful protest and using uh, terrible ways to move this right. agenda forward. What do you think is happening? I mean, on a very personal level, what do you think is happening on these campuses? And I, I ask, by the way, and I should commend you, one of the things you did at Columbia, and it's, it's a great moment if people haven't seen it, um, where, you, where you took down uh, one of the Palestinian flags and you put up an American flag. And you said you take it, uh, you know, this was, this was personal for you. But what do you think, what do you think is happening <clears throat> underneath all of this on the, these campuses? And, and the actual person who took it down was uh, Commissioner Daughtry. I really commend him, communicating with him, uh, that we have to send the right sig signal. Being mayor is not only substantive, uh, passing budgets and et cetera, but it's symbolic. Uh, and I really, I am concerned from what I'm seeing, what I'm reading, 
and what I've been talking to my colleagues, I'm concerned about a real targeted approach to radicalize our young people, uh, using some of the despair that came out of COVID, uh, using the loneliness, isolation. Uh, this is what radicalization can do. And I believe some of these steps we're seeing across America uh, is similar to some of the things we saw in other countries. And we need to t pay attention. Anytime you see a poll that states only 18 percent of 18 to 34-year-olds uh, do not uh, feel uh, this uh, is extremely excited about this country and love this country. That should be a wake-up call for us. What is our farm team looking at? What is our AAA team looking at, using the sports analogy? Who is coming up through the ranks, and how do they feel about this country? You have been outspoken about this, uh, but there have been a whole number of people uh, in the Democratic Party that have not. We have not really heard directly from President Biden, uh, at least to be nearly as vocal as you have. There's a fascinating article in The Wall Street Journal this morning. It says Biden needs to learn from the Democrats' disaster in 68. The lesson of that tumultuous political summer is clear. The fireworks may be on the party's left, but the votes needed for victory are on the right. What do you, what do you say to, to, to President Biden and to other members of the party that haven't been as outspoken as you? Well, you know, these guys have um, political strategies uh, that are quite uh, smarter uh, than I am. I don't, I don't understand all the strategies that, that will go into a national <clears throat> election. Uh, I could communicate um, what people are feeling here in the city because I'm among them. I'm on the subways. I'm walking the streets. I'm talking to people. And I hear how concerned they are about the future of their children, the future of their families. And we need to address those issues in a very real way. I'm a blue-collar May. I say it over and over again. And I have a blue-collar uh, approach to, to life. You, you made the point, Mayor, that you don't just pass budgets, that you're the, the symbolic leader as well. And, you know, you're just New York City. I mean, these are occurring everywhere now. And it just well seems said. really important for, for President Biden to, to symbolically calm everyone down, maybe, or give everyone a pep talk or whatever you want to look at. And, but he looks like he's held hostage by the same strategists that you said you know, are smarter than you about doing things, I'm not so sure. But, but those, those, those strategists, you know, we're not sure exactly how to handle, uh, you know, President Net, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu. We're not sure about a lot of this. And, and a lot of it seems to be based on worries about either getting votes or losing votes in, in November with, with certain parts of the population. But that's not what we, re what we need right now. Well, I think our country is at a, a very pivotal, important place. Of, uh, we are resilient as a country and as a city, and we're going to display that resiliency. Uh, but you can get through a war, but the uh, casualties and the devastation could be a long-term impact. I think uh, we're in a place right now where we need to really focus on our children and families and not allow people to take them off the course of what this great country has to offer and this great city has offered. Mr. Mayor, I want to pivot just because one of the other issues that a lot of business leaders in New York specifically are focused on, and frankly, actually, business leaders around the country are, are focused on, is the border uh, and immigration, illegal immigration, of course, uh, being the key here. Where, where do things stand in the city, and, and where do things stand between your relationship, frankly, and the Biden administration on this issue? Well, we, you're seeing here, we're still managing, I think we're in the area of 194,000 migrants and asylum seekers that have entered of New York City. And we put in place a very real uh, ways of managing uh, this crisis. And because of the programs we put in place, over 65 percent of them have continued on uh, with their journey. Many people who are entered through the borders are paroled in legally. I think we have to address the uh, work aspect of this, and we need to control this crisis and turn it into opportunities. We all know that there are many municipalities that are decreased in population. They're looking for workers. I think when someone comes across the border, we should assign them where they're going and tell them, here's where America needs you, and stay there for three years, work, be part of the society, and then you could travel throughout the country and live whatever you want. The way we're doing it now, we're allowing the crisis to control us and not that we should be controlling the crisis and turning it into opportunities.